All right. So now with that quick introduction out of the way, let's take a look at the actual code and jump into these concepts and understand them a little better. So I have uh, the entire code base for this in a repository. It's called as grasp grpc under automation hacks github. This is taken from the grpc java code base, but I've simplified the code in a sense that it's only taking a look at one service and the tests to make it very focused. The grpc java repository is very long and a lot of external features which you can take a look at further when you have a solid understanding of the concepts, right? To work with this, you can clone this repository either using SSH or using GitHub CLI. Uh, I am assuming you are familiar with these concepts. If not, you can take a look at the GitHub documentation just to set up SSH on your local uh, or the CLI using Homebrew and things like that. If you are on Windows platform, I think the same instructions on SSH will work there as well. Uh, so yeah. Okay, so uh, let me just talk about what this uh, application is all about uh, with an example. So let's head on to our editor. All right, so now we are here. Let me talk about uh, the folder structure a little bit so that you are comfortable with how things are organized, right? So you have the Grasp grpc uh, folder here. We are using Java 17 in this example project and also using Gradle as a build tool. In case you want to set up Java, you can go to file and then go to project structure. This will give you what is the currently configured SDK. And I would recommend that you go for a Java version 17 just to make sure everything is compatible. In case you want to say change the SDK or add something more, you can actually come here and then select, uh, you know, install the version of Java that you need. So you can click on this plus, go to download JDK, so here, like there are multiple options available to you. You can actually select any of the Oracle open JDKs. Uh, there is one by Amazon Coreto as well. Uh, you can select one of the vendor and then select the actual version of the Java language that you want. And IntelliJ will make sure that that SDK is installed and configured. So I am not going to configure it because it's already done here. Uh, now let's understand the structure of, uh, you know, our build.gradle very quickly, just to make sure we understand everything. So, uh, like if you are familiar with uh, any of the common, you know, Java project structures, uh, this will seem very familiar to you, but you can see that we use the protobuf uh, plugin. Uh, we are using Maven Central. We have certain versions of gRPC protocol buffers that we are using, that we have defined up front. And then we are uh, defining that as a dependency. So we have gRPC protobuf services, uh, gRPC stub. This is just a one-time setup that you need to do. From a testing perspective, we are using Google Truth to write fluent assertions, using the gRPC testing dependency, gRPC in process, and um, also Mockito and JUnit. So this example is going to use JUnit for unit testing and TestNG for end-to-end -end testing. So we'll cover a flavor of different frameworks that we have available. Uh, the protobuf block here actually allows you to generate the code for a given protocol buffer file, right? As I talked about earlier, we'll see an example of it. We define our source sets also define our uh, test ng task we'll come to this in a moment and uh, yeah we have the junit task uh, jcoco test report and things like that we'll come to that later on so now coming to the actual code base uh, let's understand that so here i have a couple of examples i have a hello world example and a root guide we are just going to use root guide uh, to understand things and uh, let's start with understanding the basic part, which is actually the proto, right? So under main, I have this proto directory where I have a root guide proto. So let's understand what this is about. So if anyone is creating a service in gRPC, we they usually define the service in the proto file as well as all the objects that that particular service interacts with, right? Some people might uh, segregate this into separate files wherein you have a file just for the different objects and a separate file for the service, but it's purely an implementation detail. 
So here I'm using Proto3 as a format. I've defined that the generated files should be under this package uh, with this as the outer class name and things like that. Now uh, I have defined few objects here, right? So I've introduced a point, which is a message. Let's see what this is. So this is a representation of a geographical point with a latitude and a longitude with two values as both integers. Now, if you have a point, you can construct a rectangle on the map as well, right? So this is uh, representing that wherein you have a point to represent the lower left corner of a rectangle and other, another point to represent the upper right corner of the rectangle. Think of it like a Google Maps application that we are trying to build. Now, uh, the third part is for any given point, there is a feature that is associated, right? So feature will have a name which is of type string and it will have a given point that you have, uh, which is what we defined above, right? And that is enough for now. We will understand more structures as we come to it. But this seems pretty uh, similar and familiar, right? So now uh, let's understand the service also. So if you expand service, you can see it has four different uh, methods. It has a get feature method that takes a point and then returns a feature. Say you want to identify what does this geographical point have, right? So it will just return a string for you. And the implementation of it, if you see uh, the proto file is actually empty because when we run it through the proto compiler, it will actually generate, uh, you know, certain helpful classes for us to work with. And let's take a look at that. There are a bunch of other methods as well to list all the features within a rectangle or record a route and return a summary. Also supports root chat to demonstrate like bi-directional streaming. Uh, we can come to it later. So now, uh, given that we understand what are the data structures we are working with or what is the service, how do you really start testing it, right? So before you can uh, understand, say, unit testing or end-to-end -end testing, it's always very helpful to understand uh, the API at a functional and a non-functional level. So let's understand how can we uh, basically investigate that. So we are assuming that you have already cloned this repository on your local and uh, also have set up Java. So here is this Gradle command that is going to run our code base and then it's going to generate the artifacts, right? So let's run this. So you can see the build is successful, which is well and good. Now, where does all the file get generated? So you can actually come to build and then you can see that it has all these different classes that are generated for us. So if I come to root guide, you can see that there are all these files that proto compiler itself generated. You remember seeing the point, uh, the rectangle, and uh, you can see that there is a large file that's generated that has all the sort of different methods that will allow you to create an instance of this object using say new instance, uh, also will expose like a getter and a setter kind of interface. You don't really need to bother with the implementation details. Any developer uh, can actually just make use of it directly. And uh, you can see that it also generates bunch of other files. So we'll come to it iteratively as we explore this code base. But for now, you can understand that it generates files for us, right? So now the next important thing is we will use a UI to investigate our service. So you can see that there is a utility called as gRPC UI. It's available in Homebrew. So you can install that. I have already have it installed, so I'm not going to install it now. But I can run this command with gRPC UI, specify what is uh, the host and uh, the port that I want to investigate. Before that, nothing is really running right now. So let's make sure we run our server. You can see that there, this is the file called as root guide server. This is also auto generated for us by proto compiler. And I can uh, say run this file once. So what you can see is our server actually got started. You can see that our server is started and it is uh, now listening at 8980 port, which is what I will give in this command as well. So let's run this part. 
So it brings up the gRPC uh, UI for us and we can see that we have a single service called as root guide. It has four different methods that we saw in the proto file. Now let's become familiar with this UI a little bit. So we have request form with request metadata where you can add any headers, the key and value pairs that you want to pass as metadata. And then the request data is your request body. So you can see the service is pretty simple. For the get feature method, you give me a point with a latitude and longitude, which should be of integer types. And then I will give you a response. So let's just try our luck with zero and zero. So you can see it returns an empty feature. Basically nothing is available at this point right now. Um, so you can see what are the response headers that it returns. The content type here is actually application slash grpc. And if there are any trailers as well, you will see it here. In case you make multiple requests, you are going to get a history of those uh, requests here and you can load a previous request from that point in case you want to run. You can also save this history in case you want to reload it again or something like that. So pretty uh, nifty UI, uh, it allows you to also explore uh, even complex nested structures in your request by just navigating and tapping through it. So, uh, so one uh, negative case we have already tested. What if the feature doesn't exist at a given point? Let's make sure we can test a positive scenario as well. So there is a file called as root guide DB in this uh, project, which is a static file, which has a list of these latitude and longitudes and a given location here. And this is seeded uh, when we just start the server. Uh, I'll show you the code for that later on. But let's see uh, what if I give it a point, which is which should be existing in my in-memory database. Uh, yeah, so you can see it actually returns the address at that given point, which matches to what we have. We are going to use the same operation just to understand how different types of tests can be written. So, and that's all for this video. I hope this gives you a good enough idea on what gRPC is about. Um, we will dive into more concepts in subsequent videos. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like, share and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.